Hey, welcome to A Life Learn. Today I'm going to be talking about the incredibly long waits for anyone involved with the Ontario court system, specifically from a victim's perspective. Ideas are nearly as useful as what we do with them. An idea could escape. Ideas are bulletproof. Becca here, and for those who aren't familiar with myself and my channel, I am a victim of years of sexual assault as well as uh, physical beatings, and I finally felt able to go to the police about the abuse that I had been through in June of 2013. And from that time, the preliminary hearing was set to be the following February. And then from that time, the following court case, actual trial, was set to be the following April, which is the April that just passed. And unfortunately, he's a very smart person, and so he did some finagling and managed to get them to adjourn it again. And so now it's been postponed again until next March, that is March 2016. So I originally reported it in June of 2013. It was supposed to go to trial in April of 2015, and now it's been postponed to March of 2016 almost three years after I originally reported it. And this is not uncommon in terms of the things that are experienced in the Ontario court system. It's actually apparently considered very reasonable to have an eight to 10 month wait between your preliminary and your actual trial, which is basically what I experienced in each waiting period between the preliminary, the trial, and now this new trial being set. According to statistics, between 1992 and 2007, the number of days and appearances required to complete a case had actually doubled. And so in order to address this, the Ontario government created a justice on target strategy, which was supposed to address a lot of the problems within the court system that slow it down, thus reducing the number of days and appearances that are required for cases to be completed so that waiting times can be reduced. But according to many professionals involved in the court system, apparently this justice on target strategy has had little to no effect on the overall issue of the number of days and appearances it takes to finish a case. They apparently only address surface things like appearances rather than addressing a lot of the more intricate details that actually affect how long it takes for a case to be completed. There are several different areas in which improvement could be made, and they've been noted by many different professionals, such as uh, electronic scheduling system that could eliminate the need for procedural court appearances, which would drastically reduce the number of times someone would have to appear in court, and thus free up the courts a lot more for more serious cases, such as my sexual abuse case. There's also processes that are being applied in other provinces already and have reduced the wait times and appearances that in those provinces that really should be practiced in Ontario, such as a process called uh, pre-charge screening, which basically allows the Crown to determine if there is even a strong case existing or if it should just be thrown out for weak evidence, thus saving a lot of time in the courts. And this is already being done in New Brunswick, Quebec, and British Columbia. Columbia. And I mean, Ontario is the most populated province in Canada. What the heck? Why aren't they on the ball with this? Another thing that's been implemented in another area of Canada that's shown effectiveness is a court counter for administrative matters such as booking trials, whereas in Ontario you actually have to show up in court in order to do that. They would be able to save a lot of time in terms of the courts and the judges and the lawyers' time if they could do what they're doing in Alberta right now, which is just implement this court counter where people can go and do all these matters in a much quicker and simpler way. There's also been suggestion that on-site legal aid would be really helpful, as well as uh, just quicker disclosure processes in general, where they're spending less time dwelling on unnecessary court appearances. And another thing that I really think would be a big help to addressing a lot of the clogging in the court systems is recognizing that people who are referred to as career criminals, those who end up going back to the courts and back in jail constantly for the same crimes, never seeming to learn from their experience of being sentenced, those people are clearly mentally ill and they need help. They need to be given rehabilitation rather than just punishing them and sending them back out into society with the same mentalities to do the same things. 
But sadly, according to the article I was reading about this, even though they've implemented this strategy, they're applying it to an appearance-based and paper-based system without actually introducing any new methods or new funding for that matter, so it's not having the kind of effect that it needs to. And so victims like myself are really experiencing the brunt of it in the sense that it's been years since I reported it and even more years since I experienced the abuse. And of course, I need to be available in order to testify for the trial, for it to matter at all, for him to be able to be convicted but it's a known fact that the human memory deteriorates with time and I'm currently trying to recover from the trauma that I experienced from that abuse and the idea of that in terms of PTSD recovery is dissociating and disconnecting with all of the associations the pain and the memories that I have of that abuse but how can I properly do that while also keeping the memories intact so that I can properly testify and reiterate what happened in a correct fashion so that I don't get accused of being a liar just because the details aren't lining up right in my memory anymore. It's been proven that the only way to keep your memory strong and able to recall it is to continue exercising it, which means my desire to disconnect from this trauma and these memories is basically null and void. It's out the window until the trial can happen. I need to keep an association and a connection to this trauma in order to be able to test for it, making my therapy 10 times worse, of course. And on top of this, it's been proven that every time you recall a memory, you actually alter it a little bit. That's just how the human brain works. And so in me having to keep these memories strong so that I can recall them when I need at the trial, over a year from now, I need to both, one, not be able to fully recover from my trauma and therapy because I need to keep the associations and some of the memories that I'm trying to break away from. From. And in having to continue to keep these associations strong and these memories strong by continuing to recall them, I'm still slightly altering them every time I try to strengthen them. That's just the human memory and it's very, very frustrating and just plain unfair to any victim who's involved in the court system to have to go through so much waiting. All we want to do is what's right, report the crime, get the person help, or get them at least off the street so that they can't hurt more people. But in the end, it's just tying up our lives. I mean, I was supposed to have my trial a few weeks ago in April, and now I have a whole nother year to wait. Honestly, I was bawling my eyes out yesterday at this idea because of all these different things it means about my need to stay associated and connected to the trauma that I went through and the fact that it, it keeps my life on constant hold. I can't go do the things I want, I can't go anywhere far away from where the trial is supposed to be held because I need to be available for it. And this doesn't have to take as long as it is. I mean, of course all the delays that he's created because he knows the court system and knows how to mess with them is one thing to deal with, but if he wasn't required to have gone to a courtroom in order to have set the preliminary, if the time between then and the preliminary wasn't eight months, if the time between the preliminary and the trial wasn't another ten months, and then again another ten months from now until the reset trial, if those time periods weren't so long, it wouldn't be nearly as much of an issue. And as I mentioned previously in the video, there's several already practiced methods in other areas of Canada that could be implemented to help address this issue more. It's just not fair to anyone involved in a court case. And so with that, if you happen to be involved in anything uh, court related in Ontario, please vent. But even if anywhere else in the world and you're having issues, feel free to comment below about the struggles that you're going through. I definitely feel for you. I really am very frustrated with the system right now. It's completely screwing my life around. And with that, you're most definitely not alone if you happen to be going through this too. So if you're struggling with this as well, feel free to message me and share your experiences. Even just having the support of knowing that other people are going through this really does help everyone involved. So thank Thank you so much for watching and please join me again next week where I try again to share a little something I've learned in life.